All right, so I promised one more follow on video from the last one. Um, and this one would go into a few details when it comes to working with matrices and vectors in MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB really does excel when it comes to uh, linear algebra calculations. And um, it's a really important skill, I think, to be able to gain that, be uh, um, confident with some of the, the basic commands that MATLAB can do and using it to solve some equations and so on, like the one that we resulted in in that last uh, section on cubic splines. So in the previous video, we ended up with a five by five system to solve. And I just said, hey, the answer is this. Um, but it turns out that MATLAB has a really easy way of solving that. So, so that's kind of the inspiration for this. And I want to go through a few different commands that MATLAB has uh, just to give you some familiarity. It should not be a very long video at all. And honestly, one thing you should do is take this stuff, go to MATLAB, uh, see what you can do in terms of, um, you know, using those commands yourself to practice a little bit and put it into place and so that you're ready to use any of this uh, when it comes necessary. So why don't we jump into it? Uh, as I said, not too, too long today. Um, uh, yeah, what happens here? What, what do these blanks go? I didn't practice these. So in practice, in practice, oh, I know. In practice, no one in their right mind would voluntarily solve a five by five system of equations by hand. You would take it, you would go to a calculator of some sort and tools like this are built into MATLAB. On a test, I would not expect you to do this by hand, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind that if I wanted you to solve a system like that, I would expect you to be able to take that data and use a calculator, use MATLAB to be able to solve, okay? So let's see, I wanna talk about um, some commands that MATLAB can use, uh, that, that MATLAB has rather, that you can use and reference so you never have to worry about solving a system like that. So, okay, we introduced a couple of basics when it came to matrices with that um, divided difference scheme from a couple of lectures ago, right? We, we talked about how you can, can define things like, oh, an M two, four equals one or whatever to assign one entry of a, of a matrix, um, the, the number one and have all the rest in the corresponding square matrix, uh, equaling zeros. And there's examples of that a couple of, uh, a couple of lectures ago, but you can actually define a whole custom matrix at once. And that's where I want to start here. So to define a custom matrix, what you want to use is square ba square brackets and semicolons. So if you want to, if you want to program this matrix right here, all right, I need something to name it. I tend to like using capital letters for matrices because that's what we often use in math. Um, but you can input this into MATLAB and this will define all nine entries of the matrix at once. So you would say capital M equals, and then in square brackets, separated by semicolons each row, two, three, negative four, one, two, five, zero, one, six, just like this. That period is the end of the sentence. That's not part of the command. Okay. Once you've defined a matrix, you can refer to those entries the same way that we did a couple of classes ago. If you were to simply put in M12, you'd end up with three, this entry right there. That would be output. So that way, once you've got a custom matrix defined, you can refer to any of the entries super, super easily the way that you'd expect to. Okay. Um, there are a couple of really important matrices that are useful, and um, uh, some of them are kind of, I don't know, the commands are kind of cute, I'm, I'm not going to lie. And I you're like, how can, we're talking about programming, and we're talking about matrices, which are two topics that my students don't always love, and I'm calling this cute. But I mean, look at this. You, you just can't argue it. I'm sorry. Um, so let, let's see here. N equals zeros, the word is zeros with brackets and two, three. Um, this creates a matrix M with two rows and three columns where all the entries are zeros. So that's interesting, right? That, that gives you this matrix right here. Zero, 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 zero. Right there, okay? Of course, this two and three is not the only thing. It's in general, it's zeros, you know, M, N. Like how, how many rows, how many columns do you want? Um, so yeah, that a, a, can be a very useful command. This is the one that I think is the cutest, right? Um, 
I in MATLAB is, is usually protected. I think it usually refers to like the imaginary component in complex math. So they needed something else to be the identity matrix. So what did they do? I, I4, check this out. I, E, Y, E creates the matrix M that is the four by four identity matrix. So this I should be on the next row. So that is this matrix right here. One, one, one down the diagonal with zeros everywhere else. And of course, again, this four is not necessarily a four. It could be a three, it could be a seven. It doesn't really matter, okay? Um, but that's how you make an identity matrix in MATLAB. Once you've got a matrix defined, you can do all sorts of things. So um, uh, there are some commands I've, I've given you right here that I would like you to take some time and experiment with. And there's a for you to try or for you to code problem that has you kind of practicing with some of the stuff. But honestly, a lot of this is really just playtime. So you can use plus and minus to do what you would want to do with matrices, be able to add and subtract them. Of course, you need those two matrices to have the same dimensions or else those operations are not well-defined. So there's that. Um, M star N performs matrix multiplication where it's valid. So you need the right dimensions to match up in the right way in order to make sure that we can do this, right? The number of columns of the first one has to equal the number of rows of the second, or else this operation is not defined. Uh, just think of, the that's not anything for you to memorize. That is a fact from linear algebra. So that should be pretty straightforward, I think. Um, yeah, m squared can be used to calculate m times m. Of course, here, I think m has to be a square matrix. Um, you can use det of m, of course, to find the determinant of a square matrix. You can use uh, an apostrophe right here to find the transpose of M, basically swapping rows and columns. That's gonna be important for uh, one of the last commands that we'll talk about here. And INV of M finds the inverse of M if M is an invertible matrix. So a few really interesting, simple things, doing some simple linear algebra uh, sorts of concepts that uh, hopefully you should be pretty uh, uh, familiar with from first year linear algebra. But it's nice to be able to have something do the heavy lifting for you, especially when uh, you're working with a matrix that might be a very large one, uh, like ones that we saw while doing that uh, cubic splining. Okay, uh, our last example, how to solve a system of five equations and five unknowns. So it's nice to be able to know how to do this. Suppose we have a linear system of equations, AX equals B. And here we have A as a matrix, X is some vector of variables that we're dealing with. And uh, B is some vector of, uh, you know, numbers or something. So a usual system of, of equations uh, uh, as we would normally be able to solve using a matri matrix. So, what we need to do is define A and B and then use a backslash command. This here solves the system. But there's a, there's a, a, a catch and we have to be a little bit careful of that catch. It's important that B is a vector that is a column vector. Agreed? If you're solving a system, right, it has to look like this. If you have like two, three, five, one, six, I'm just coming up with random numbers here, zero, one, two, and we have your vector of variables, so the x, maybe it's x1, x2, x3, or whatever it is, right? Your b, this, this vector right here, can't be this, one, two, three, right? That is not going to be well-defined here. I need to have the same number of rows as on the left-hand side of the equation. So this is not cool. I need this to be vertically oriented as well. I need this to be a column vector. The problem with that is that if you go and define a, 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 a vector using uh, square brackets and just put in the entries, you're getting a row. And so you need to be really careful of that because a lot of students will start by um, you know, trying to define these objects and then inadvertently uh, use a, a row vector as their B, this, this constant on the right-hand side, and then wonder what the heck they did wrong, or if 
if MATLAB's just being annoying or whatever, when it um, uh, outputs an error at the end instead of giving an answer. So make sure, end, end of day, that when you define your B, whenever you define that vector on the right-hand side of the equal sign, you use something like this with this prime right there, which does the transpose. So with the prime and not just this without this will cause an error um, if trying to use a backslash b because it's literally not a solvable thing the dimensions don't don't line up so at the end of the day um there's a little bit of code here at the bottom of the page that uh kind of harkens back to that last system from the previous lecture on cubic splines that we could use to solve that final matrix so we have um you know a being defined as the matrix of different uh um you know that represents the the system that we had the B is the numbers that appeared on the right-hand side of that equal sign. And then we solve using X equals A backslash B. And that gives us a vector of answers um, that work. So that is, that's basically all I wanted to talk about. A few different things. It's a little bit of a playtime. Um, in that, I think some of these commands are just useful to in general. And you won't get to know them unless you sit down and you practice. And you try this out and you try that out. And you try without that prime and you see it not work in front of your eyes. And you're like, oh yeah, that's why I need that prime so I can do the transpose and then it will work. And then you feel really good about things. It's nice to be able to have a tool that can solve linear algebra things uh, without having to, right? Like find the determinants of a 10 by 10 matrix. Not very nice to do or impossible to do by hand. It's great to have a, uh, the ability for a computer to do it for you. And again, I want to emphasize that my expectations on a test is if if a system ro arose such like such as one of uh, that would be produced from that cubic splines example, I wouldn't want you to use pencil and paper to work it out. I would expect you to get to an answer um, by using software. So um, that's all I want to talk about today. Uh, that's the end of this section. And uh, hopefully you've seen a lot of the different sorts of uh, interesting ways that we can interpolate different points. Um, there are other ways as well, but we only uh, kind of touch the surface of a few different things. Um, but there's a lot more to read about there too. Um, anyway, we're going to change gears in the class to come and start talking about some calculus concepts uh, in the context of numerical methods. So I hope you join me. Uh, I will see you later. Uh, take care for now.